right guys so we're back for day three and the last day of iCast 2019 we're about to hit the showroom floor and check out some of the products of most of my partners and we're going to also look for some new stuff so we're going to run and gun we're going to talk to some anglers and uh bring you the iCast experience so going to go check out a video game for fishing that's supposed to be real and then uh we're going to go hit a couple of other booths so stay with me so tell me what you got so we've got a uh well, it's a computer game at the end of the day, and in a nutshell, it's available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. It's been out since uh, around September last year. But what the game is, it's uh, what we call a live service. So we're constantly updating, improving, expanding it. And uh, next week, next Thursday, we're doing a relaunch. So if you're an existing customer, it's just the game's just going to tell you it's got a big update to do. But also, what we're trying to do is almost sell the game again to loads of people that haven't bought it yet. Uh, big things that are going into the game next Thursday are a career mode where <laughs> you can replicate the tours yeah. and uh, we're working with uh, Scott Martin but there's also a, um, another 30 odd uh, pro bass anglers going into the game and uh, just over 60 anglers from Europe for carp fishing in there so just over 100 anglers overall. Um, three brand new venues, so we're doing sections of Lake Gunnersville and Lake Travis. Uh, so there'll be ten lakes overall in the core game, five in Europe, five in the US. Uh, custom multiplayer, so... We have our national championship on Gunnersville next year. Do you year. really? Yeah. 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 All right, so one of my favorite parts about iCast is checking out the booths of some of the products that I really love and that I already use to see what's new. So we're going to head into the Fish Head booth. I've been using Fish Head now for about nine months. Uh, I'm a big fan of this Primal Vibe. Uh, it's just something a little bit different that they haven't seen. The vibration, the underspin. Um, you probably know Fish Head from the underspin, but this Primal Vibe is absolutely one of the coolest chatterbaits I've ever used. The underspin also allows it to kind of skip along the bottom, create some commotion, some clanging, uh, fishing muscle, fishing rocks, and things like that. So I already love this bait. I'm gonna see if I can grab one of their pros. We're gonna find out what's new for iCast 2019 from, um, hey man, can I borrow you for a second? Sure, man, what's up? Greg, what's up? How's it going? So anyway, so this is Greg. Greg, tell what's up, us guys? what's new from the folks at Fish Head for iCast uh, 2019. We got a whole new finesse series. So uh, each one of these has probably got a little bit smaller hook than what you traditionally see, like this. Here's our bread and butter right here, the Fish Head Spin. But we've got a two alt gamma katsu, so it's super sharp. But it's also super strong, so you can you can literally throw that on a bait caster if you want. Cool thing about that is you can put a two or three inch swim bait or straight tail you know type minnow bait on there and and be really low profile with that finesse series. Same so thing. for those deep clear Tennessee yeah, lakes where you're throwing it up on there and you're bumping it on the bottom, dropping down to that 3.75 or yeah. that two and a half inch swim bait and still having that little bit of flash. Yeah, they start you know later in the you know late summer they start getting on shad fry. Yeah, yeah. So it's shad fry are maybe you know only two inches long at best. Yeah. That's when this finesse series will work really good too. Same thing with this dude. Check that out. It's got that same two alt hook in it, and then the brand new Ned head right there stands up great. That hook right there will lock them up, dude. I'm telling you. So Ned head. Let me see this dude. Ned, dude, dude. 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 It's the dude. dude. You gotta check dude. it out. Dude. <laughs> so I'm gonna take one of these out of the package if you don't mind. Absolutely. So uh, let's take a look at the. Let's take a look at this dude. Yeah. Put a straight tail minnow on there. Usually. Look at that. When that head starts to vibrate, the whole minnow moves at the back end, looks just like a real minnow. Vibration, flash, durability, all in a compact package. You know as well as I do, if you're tournament fishing, if there's a lot of pressure, or if you're doing like I'm doing, you're TV fishing and you gotta catch fish, sometimes you gotta downsize. Everybody likes the concept of big bait, big fish, but elephants eat peanuts, right? That's just how it works. So anyway, check out the folks at Fish Head, uh, Fish Head Spin. Check them out on Instagram, social media. Also link them up in the description box below. We're going to do some giveaways with these folks later on. Uh, I've met the guy that owns the company. Phenomenal dude. Dedicated to making quality products made in the USA. And it's just something about, you know, finding companies like that. I'm not sponsored by them. Don't have a relationship with them. Just found the products, bought the products, love the products, and I'm going to keep buying them. So anyway, new, fi new finesse series. One of the things that I like, man, is I like taking kids out, right? And a lot of times we forget about 
because we're trying to catch a big yeah, sack or whatever, fish, but just to catch numbers. Oh, yeah. um, a lot of people think of finesse, and if you're in the, the pro arena, you think of finesse as downsizing to catch fish. But if you just want to catch numbers, it doesn't matter if it's pressured or not. You throw in some finesse stuff and power fish some finesse, a little power finesse action, you're going to put a lot of fish in the boat. So. Multiple species, too. Yeah, man. Don't anyway, check out the folks from Fish Head. All right, so I walk the show, and I find stuff for me because I'm finding stuff for us. But I forget that I got Christy with me and there's things that are gonna catch a woman's eye as well. You guys know that Christy is known for wearing her crazy britches, right? So she's done the videos. If you go to the Bonafide booth, she's got on some crazy britches on the whole side of the booth. That picture's on her Instagram. Y'all can go check it out, at Christy Bass Fishing. So we're doing a fish head spin piece and I walk out of the booth and I get assaulted by my wife who drags me into this booth, the Blue Water Gear booth, and she's found herself some crazy britches. So I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel. Is that Rachel? Is that... Uh, yes. Look at this ink Hi. right here. Look at this. We're gonna, we're gonna admire the art. And the reason we're gonna do that, she has good taste and she's also the designer of the gear. And Christy's gonna talk to you about crazy britches. And you're never gonna see me in spandex pants or stretch pants or whatever they're called. So I'm gonna turn it over to the experts and let them tell you about Blue Water Gear's crazy britches. <laughs> y'all, y'all know how I love my crazy pants. Everybody kind of makes fun of me, but really I know y'all love them too. So I'm walking past this booth. I've admired the ink. They don't kind of make fun of her. They actually <laughs> make fun of her. Whatever. I've admired the ink, like in passing from going to meeting to meeting, like day after day after day. And, and I'm watching a video of, you know, fish and stuff because we're here at ICAST and I see crazy pants that are absolutely gorgeous so yes and she's the designer so I'm going to turn it over to Rachel she's going to tell you about the crazy pants and then we'll show you some of the designs. Yeah we got I mean all of our leggings have a UPF 30 in them so they're sun protecting they are quick dry they are anti-odor they are absolutely amazing I'm a little biased but everybody that takes them puts them on they tell me immediately this is my new favorite pair of leggings. Not only are the designs cool, they fit great, uh, super thick waistband on them, and of course, Miss Christy likes them for the designs. <laughs> look nice how, and bright. Look how beautiful these are. I mean, they it's actually like artwork on your legs. Yeah. Like, that is gorgeous. And ladies, uh, y'all will appreciate this, nobody else will, but look at this the size of this waistband, the thickness of it. I mean, that is awesome. It's not gonna roll whenever you're in the kayak or if you're out fishing or anything. Um, <laughs> that is awesome and every single design is absolutely gorgeous they're all different very very different but absolutely beautiful so you've done a phenomenal job Thank you i love so them much. i love them this is uh that. this is my favorite find of icast 2019 so He's just, you know, Shark Tank famous, right? So nobody wants to talk to me. All right, follow I got him. Follow right here. So look, so this is a big time product for me because you gotta cut a lot of line. And for years I just bit it off. So when this thing came out, I'm not a big ring fan, right? So their, their product is ring based, but what's cool about it is it works great for the seat frame of kayaks. So all my kayaks have line cutters on the seat frame. I've got them on the base of the camera pole. Christy's got them on the butt of several of her rods. They're on both of our PFDs. I actually put them vertical so I can just take the line and cut through it. So, um, but they got a couple of other things that I want to talk about. So I got to grab Vance and let him talk about those because it's new for ICAST 2019. So give me two minutes to put him in the headlock and we'll find out what's new from line cutters. All right, so we got Vance to take a break from being Shark Tank famous real quick Get out of here. and step down into my world. Well, he's still not down into my world because he, he like hovers over me. But so anyway, listen, we've already talked about the, the staple product. We've already talked about the fact that when I met you, I told you I don't really like to wear rings. I don't even wear a wedding ring. I have it tattooed on. But what I love about line cutters is they fit the bars of everything. They fit the bottom of rods. They fit the camera mount pole. Uh, they fit the net. We use them on the landing nets. We use them on the seat frames of our kayak. So Vance walks up to me at a, at a recent event. He says, hey man, I got something new. <laughs> did, saying, I, did I actually look like that? Kind of like that. He, he did the Vance thing. So. <laughs> I got something new and he handed me this dude right here. Now, it was not a surprise that it was coming, but it was a surprise to see it. In other words, we had talked about it. We had talked about it for two years. Yeah. Almost two years at least. You're right. And then uh, it was two years, it was two ICAST ago. Yep. And so what he was developing 
is a zipper pull line cutter, right? I want to let you talk about it because he's actually so passionate about it, he can do a better job, and I almost have no voice left. So talk about the line cutter zipper pull. All right, so Chad, you know, it's people like you, influencers in the industry that I know will give me a dead, dead honest feedback. That's why I've always trusted your opinion. And so many people are taking our ring and mounting it to their kayak seat posts. They're hanging them on their little hooks on their shirts, putting them on their rod handles. I knew we had to come up with some other options, right? So I ran up by you and uh, that's when we came up with the zipper pull. Now what's cool about the zipper pull is any zipper lanyard, if you have a trolling motor, power pole lanyard as a professional bass angler, to a kayak- That's why I wear mine. I wear mine on my power pole lanyard, Nicholas. To a kayak angler, I mean, honestly, every PFD, personal flotation device, should have a line cutter zipper pull on it, mm -hmm. for, just for safety alone. Now the benefit of this is it's right here, right? You don't have a retractor to burn out. You don't have a pivot point that starts to loosen up. I can't cut my skin with it, but when I want to cut some braided fishing line, so here's uh, just some real basic braid. Literally, it just touches it. It touches that line. If you want to cut a tag line off, or actually the line right off your lure, we notched out that tip, and you can actually ride that right along, and you can get the knot off. So it cuts your tag line, it cuts your knots. You can put it on a jacket, zipper, tackle bag, uh, PFD, you can literally put them anywhere, and they're ceramic, and you, so it's not gonna rust. You guys know I'm a big fan of the Yeti products, right? And one of the things about Yeti, give me one that's out, do you have one out? Yeah. One of the things about Yeti products are, is they have a U-lock, and that U-lock is really difficult, and that zipper's really tight. So I've started to replace those with these. So now every uh, cooler, every dry bag, every gear bag I've got has got one of these on it, because you always need to cut something in fishing. and with the other line cutters ring, you cut it off, but you can never get down to the tag line. So you cut it and then you still got to bite that knot off before you can retie. And so when he was doing the product testing, he's like, what's the one thing we need to fix? And I was like, if you could get to the ring, if you could get to the, the hook eye and cut it completely off. And I, it was like 14 hours later that I found the text message that he sent me two minutes later <laughs> that was like, dude, this is all you got to do. And it was a, like a rendering and lo and behold, here's the product. So this thing is awesome to put on your PFD zipper. You can put it on zipper pockets of your raincoat. Uh, you can put it on your keychain. You can put it, again, I love it on dry bags because dry bag zippers are inherently difficult to get to lock and to unlock. And this thing just gives you that surface area. It's perforated, so you got good grip. Uh, to be honest with you, I talked about the Yakima uh, top water box being my favorite overall product of ICAST, right? My favorite transportation uh, problem solving solution. But my favorite accessory, hands down, been up and down, it's day three of the show, it's over, I'm not gonna find anything else, is this zipper pull from line cutters. Now, it's not new because I've been using it for four months now, but it's new to the world. And so if you don't have one of these line cutter zipper pulls yet, you gotta go get yourself, like, I would say one, go get yourself one, but you're gonna need like four or six. So just go ahead and buy like a dozen, <laughs> give them to somebody and call it good. Anyway, thanks Vance, man. All right. We got ahead. Appreciate Listen, it. you guys, be sure there. to check out all the products from Line Cutters. They got flat mounts. They got the ring mounts. They got new stuff coming all the time. And this guy's an idea a minute. There's like 15 things in the hopper. So when you buy into Line Cutters, you're buying into the future of solving problems. And now we got to go. I don't have anything else to say, but let's just slow pan over to how good looking this dude is real quick. Go ahead. Oh, right you're here. Not, right here. All right, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like I'm just saying, if I was going to... Anyway, look at that Get right there. Here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to tell you. Not only do they make awesome products, but they can make their awesome products awesomer. That's a word Chrissy told me. She said it's a word, so I'm using it by customizing it. Now, if you want to do fundraisers, if you want to get your brand image out there, they can customize any of their products. So what they're going to do is they're going to demonstrate real quick how to customize one of the flat mounts with the KBF logo. Pretty simple pretty easy, pretty clean, but it's something that not many companies offer these days is the ability to customize their products, but the folks at Line Cutters do. All right, guys, so I made it to the Cortland booth, ran into Ryan here. So listen, last year we met at the FLW Expo and I was right. walking past and I did the whole walk, like the double take, because I've been a fan of Cortland products for years. Uh, not a lot of people know it, but I'm a fly fisherman. I've been a fly fisherman for 25 years. Uh, fly fishing's kind of been my fishing. Uh, Christy's gotten into it pretty heavy, so this year we're going to start adding fly fishing content back to our or to our platform, right? So you're going to see a lot of fly fishing coming from us. So I started talking around. I was like, "What? 
wait, you guys make braid? When did y'all start making braid? He's like, um, we've been making braid like longer than anybody else. <laughs> so the only thing about it was they weren't making it under their own name, right? They weren't making it as a Cortland branded braid. So I bought some braid, uh, some master braid at the booth. I took it home, I started using it. I said, look, he was trying to give me some. I said, dude, I'm gonna buy it. If I like it, I can say I like it. And if I don't, I can hate it. Then I can do a video, whatever. So I told him what I'd used in the past. He's like, he got a big like smirk on his face. He's like, here dude, try this. So the first thing he gave me was Master Braid, all right? So I started playing with this stuff. I took home a box of 20 uh, and 30 and they didn't have any 40 at the time. They had sold out or it wasn't ready yet or something like that. Yeah, we're just coming out with the 40. And so then I ordered some 40. Then I ordered some bigger line. And then he said, I got a text from him. Hey man, I just sent you something. I said, what is it? He said, you'll see. And uh, I get an envelope maybe two weeks later and it's got the silent flip in it. Correct. So this is by far the best braid that I've used uh, just as standard running braid, braid that you use for everything. Good knot tying, it doesn't fade, it doesn't you know, get fuzzy, it doesn't deteriorate, it doesn't swell up, it doesn't absorb water. Like all the things you're looking for in a braid, this is by far, like it's aptly named, Master Braid. It's the best braid out there. I love the fact that it comes in these bulk spools because you know how the hot dogs come in sixes and buns come in eights and you're always like, well reels and spools never match up. So you always get like a piece of spool and braid's already expensive. So if you don't get all of it on the spool, then it's a problem. So the fact that they come in these bulk spools, what I did is rigged up a little dispenser in my shop and then I could just go down and get what I want. But let me show you this. I'm gonna let him talk to you about silent flip because I got it, but I got it in the winter time. So I wasn't really flipping. So as soon as flipping kind of came back, I'd, I'd got out in the yard and played with it, and I got out in the in the garage, and I got in the shop, and my son and I, you know, doing some little flipping contest. And uh, I posted on Instagram about it the other day, and I said it's uh, it's sl slicker than goose crap, right? And people were like, dude, I'll buy it just on that name alone. But not only is it slick through the guides, it's slick in the water. What I mean by that is when you punch it, it comes back through the grass, and the problem with braid and flipping is it cuts into the grass. Correct. So when it cuts into the grass, it makes a groove and then it's buried and your bait gets hung up. This stuff is slick, right? So I'm gonna let Ryan tell you a little bit about the, the, the silent flip. Yeah, so this year we wanted to do something a little bit different, innovate, and we had, you know, most braids are four, six, eight carriers, even nine. And what we did is we made a 16 carrier braid to be absolutely silent. So when you have all of that weave, it's not a rough edge, it's super soft. Um, it's going to cut through the grass when you pitch through heavy cover. Your bait is not only going to be quiet when you're working your bait, but it's also going to fall through the mat easier. And that's a better presentation. It's going to allow you to get more bites, get more flips to actually get through the vegetation to where the fish are. And you can get away with less weight. Correct. You need just enough weight to break through the, the mat, but not enough weight to break through the mat and cut through the grass as it's fallen. So it slides in nice and easy. Correct. And so you can get away with even a little bit less weight which means a slower fall in a lot of cases, which means more fish, so. Right, and that, that rough edge is gonna catch on to pads. It's gonna catch on to, you know, all the hydro when it's running through. And now that we have a super soft, silent braid, very, very strong, the brake strength on this stuff is absolutely incredible. It ties knots well. Again, it's slick, it stays round because of the, the, the number of strands. It doesn't flatten out. It's everything, if you're a flipping fisherman, and I don't do a lot of flipping on TV, because it's kind of boring to watch, right? It's like watching a guy, you know, yo-yo something into a hole. But when you're tournament fishing, it's hot out and the fish are sucked up under the, you know, under the vegetation. Um, or if you're skipping, one of the th cool things about this is, I started skipping it under docks. I was fishing uh, Dale Hollow, fishing a couple of other Tennessee River Lakes, and I had it already tied on, and I was looking for some opportunities to flip and punch, and it just wasn't there yet, right? But when you skip it, the thing that I didn't think about is with that line being that much slicker, there's less resistance across the guides. So even when you're skipping, you don't get as many backlashes or even little slight overruns because it's so slick and, you, and it's effortless. You don't have to overcome that, that friction on the guide. So. And another, another big piece is like pressured fish. So in Florida, everyone, a fish is small. So you have lakes that have been beat up. The same stretch has gone through three or four times. And when you have a braid that's quieter, it's gonna allow you to get that extra bite when you really need it, it counts the most. So what else is new here at ICAST 2019? You got anything special yeah, that you wanna got, talk about? Yeah, we've got one more product here. 
It's our new drop shot leader material. And what we did was we took away some of the extra jackets for abrasion resistance that you don't need when you're dropping on clear water lakes. So what we wanted to do was we want to come out the thinnest leader material possible, but still have a super high brake strength. And that's what we did. This is premium, premium fluorocarbon, super clear, ties knots to braid really, really well. And it's a perfect drop shot leader material. And that's what we were going for. So last year when I met you, you had braid. Correct. Okay? but we still had to find our solution somewhere else with fluorocarbon and monofilament. Correct. Now I'm looking over my shoulder, you've got the total package. You've got the fluorocarbon, you've got the monofilament, you've got your braid. We have the whole package. It's our kind of breakout year into the bass world. Um, we love what you're doing with kayak fishing. You're, you know, it's revolutionizing how people are getting into the sport, the barrier of entry, and uh, we're, we're glad to be a part of it. Now the only thing I really don't like about the braid, I'll be honest with you so far, is I don't get as much of that zinging when Correct. I'm fighting the fish on video. Yep. And that has just become synonymous with what people think of fighting fish on, on braid. Especially so flipping. We're almost going to have to add the, uh, the sound effect back in. Um, but you're going to have more fish I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. just one of those things you're like, man, it's not the same. It doesn't sound like that crazy, but which is good. Right, and that's not transmitting through the water column, especially to catch that second, third, and and fourth, or you know, subsequent fish. So, I'm excited about working with these guys. They listen. They're excited about working with us. It's a great two-way relationship. Again, I walked into the booth last year. I knew the Cortland name. I knew the Cortland name for quality in the fly fishing arena. I said, there's no way they're going to put their name on crap, right? There's no way they're going to put anything out that's not great. I just didn't know how great it was until I got out there and started using it. So if you're looking for a great solution now from the real seat to the knot, check out Cortland's products. So anything else you want to talk about for this year? Made in the USA. I think that's a really cool thing that most people don't know about us. We manufacture all of our products and it's, it's a very rarity in this industry. Yeah, still well, man, that. I appreciate y'all doing that. Thank I'm you. excited to be working with these guys here at Cortland. Great company, great product, great ambassadors, great anglers, the whole thing top to bottom is right, so pick yourself up some Cortland line. <laughs> Actually, you can't tell me that is not cool. So you've got the skin on the paddles, on the blade, and on the shaft with the ruler going full length then you've got the color matched traction pads you've got the color matched black pack christy come over here like this I'm is the, just come over here woman this is like like that's all you get in there look at this shirt shoes phone case it's like the whole package it was custom made just all right so we're gonna have to get with the folks at real tree fishing bonafide and uh, BRD skins, because this is like all Christy right here. Right? You like this? I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like it. <laughs> How could I not like this? <laughs> exactly. Holy. Yeah, love it. Sorry. They should have had me in the freaking picture and then I wouldn't have had to get up there. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> if I was in the picture, I wouldn't have to get up there and fake it. You really think you're going to show me better than that one? <laughs> All right, listen, I made it to the Z-Man booth and I had to wait till the last day to make it in the Z-Man booth because this thing has been so wrapped up that I couldn't even like wedge my way in there. It takes a pretty big hole for me to get this man mass in here. So. I'm going to let Ryan talk to us about some of the new stuff that's out there. You guys know from watching my show that I'm a fan of the, the Jackhammer. Of course, everybody in the world is a fan of the Jackhammer. I'm a fan of the Project Z. Uh, I'm a fan of TRD Crawls. I'm a fan of the TRD, even though Ned Riggs, to me, is like, I got a love-hate relationship with Ned Riggs. I know they work, and I go to them when I have to, but it's one of those things that's like you don't even feel like a real angler because the lure just catches the fish for you, but I guess that's the point. Um, but Z-Man makes fantastic products. They're constantly innovating. They're always coming up with something new. And so, Ryan, talk to us about what's new from Z-Man yeah, this year. Yeah, so we've got a, a lot of new items this year, a lot of really cool bass stuff, even saltwater stuff. Um, so I'll kind of go through each of those and show you each one individually. 
Um, first up, we've actually got a new five inch diesel minnow. So a lot of guys have been fishing our four inch diesel minnow for years. Um, but basically we love the profile so much we want to come up with some bigger sizes. So now we have a five inch as well as a seven inch diesel minnow. Um, those are going to be great for everything from big bass on Okeechobee all the way up to cobia offshore. Everything in between. Finger mullet in the flats for exactly, redfish and trout, exactly. flounder. Big bull reds, yeah, everything. Gizzard chad for bass. So then next up, we've got our giant TRD. So everybody knows the TRD, they know what it looks like. Um, what we want to do, we start off with the finesse TRD. We came out with the big TRD. We decided, you know what, let's do a giant TRD. So we came out with our new giant TRD here. Um, great option. Now you can throw it on a bait caster, you can get a bigger hook catch some bigger bass, focus on those bigger fish, and um, that's been killer for us. Next up, we've Couldn't got it have our... just been the TRBD, like the real big deal? It could have been, <laughs> but it's the giant <laughs> But so uh, next up, we've got our TRD ticklers. Um, so basically when we started designing the Ned Rig, um, we started working with Drew Reese, and this was his culmination of everything he wanted in a TRD. It's the perfect size, it's got these great little tentacles. They spread out really well in the water. Fits perfectly on our finesse shrooms or even some of our new jig heads I'll show you in a second. And that's just been a phenomenal bass catching machine. Um, next up is our new TRD bugs. This is probably one of the ones I'm most excited about. So everybody's probably seen our palmetto bugs. It's a phenomenal flipping bait. So we wanted to come up with a TRD size flipping bait. Um, this goes really well with our finesse bullets, finesse shrooms, and even some of our new jig heads I'll show you. Um, but that profile is just killer, crawfish, brim, all sorts of different imitations. It's just got limitless possibilities. So, and I'm uh, excited about that because I Carolina rig the TRD crawl, and that thing right there is the do nothing Carolina rig. Exactly. You just bump it and it floats up and so. Uh, Tons of great action. Uh, yeah. So we'll come over here. So next up. Um, so everybody everybody knows what a spinner bait is, but last year we came out with the sling blade. So we wanted to come up with a premium bait, mm -hmm. really rebuild the spinner bait and come up with everything we wanted to see in a spinner bait. Um, so what we did was we came out with the sling blades. Well this year we came out with the sling blades power finesse. Same exact design, but now in a downsized frame um, on a 4 rot O'Shaughnessy style VMC hook. And it's just a much better, smaller profile um, than the original sling blades. Still great design. We have Double Willow and Colorado Indiana. So two great blade options that everybody's familiar with. So when you get in that post shad spawn kind of a deal, when you've got those little shad out there that are flickering everywhere, and you get that lower profile, that smaller profile and a more compact bait. Uh, when you're pit pitching and just letting it slow fall and line watching, that right there is money. Exactly. So next up, We've got our new chatterbait. So everybody thinks, oh, they've come out with every kind of chatterbait design you could think of. No, we're always working to be innovative and come up with new ideas. So this year we came out with the Chatterbait Freedom CFL. So this is actually a football head design, totally different than any of our others. And the cool thing about this is it's actually 100% zinc weighted. There's zero lead in the bait. So for our northern guys, they don't have to worry about lead completely lead free but the other really cool thing with zinc is now when that blade makes contact with that head it creates a totally different sound so sometimes when the fishes aren't keyed in on that lead head chatterbait that original sound that we're used to now you can throw the zinc one um, also with that we've got the swing head technology this bait works really well around rocks and bigger boulders and stuff like that so that football head comes over really well but with that swing head, you get a totally different action as it's undulating through the water. It's like a chatter structure bug. Exactly, yeah. Um, spider cut skirt, really good keeper on here. That's actually the Turbo Cross. That's a trailer that we've had out for years, but really good cross style trailer on there. Um, and that's just been a phenomenal new bait for us. Um, going into that, we've got some cool new saltwater stuff. Um, I'll show you in here, we've got our new chin locks. Uh, we used to do the chin locks for years, but we did big 10 and 12 watt saltwater stuff. So now we decided to downsize it, come out with some really good swim, swim bait hooks. Um, so now we do two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, all the sizes. We've got every size for every kind of bait you could imagine, all the way from TRD stuff, all the way up to big 10 inch swim baits. So, nice. Um, next up, we have our Texas eye. This is for our saltwater guys. Everybody's been loving it, not just in Texas. 
Um, so that Texas Eye is a weedless style jig head specifically for saltwater fishing, but the freshwater guys love it too. Um, really good 3D eyes on there, completely weedless. You can throw it in any condition you'd want and it's gonna stay perfectly going through there. Comes through grass really well, even oyster beds, just about anything. Um, next up, we have our mag shrimp. So I showed you that giant TRD. Well, of course, if you have a giant TRD, you're gonna need a giant net rig head. Right, right. So we came out with the mag shrooms. That is a six aught flipping hook on a net rig style head. Um, phenomenal hook, super strong hook. We do it in weed guard with a weedless option and we do the exposed open hook style as well. Um, lots of great weights in that. We go all the way up to a 3 8 so if you want to fish this thing in some deeper water, you can fish ledges, you can fish deep docks, all sorts of good options there. Um, Next up, so we really, you know, we, when we talk about the Ned Rig, we think about the typical size, smaller profile, smaller hooks. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that we've listened to our pros and our customers on is, one thing they wanted was they wanted a little bit heavier heads and they wanted a little bit stouter hook. We all understand that those light wire hooks, sometimes you have problems when you're trying to reel in really big fish, you want to put a little more pressure on them. So we came out with the Pro Shrooms. That Pro Shrooms is built on a two-aught hook and it's a much stouter, beefier hook so you don't have to worry about bending it out or stressing it out really solid hook there and once again we're also going to be doing some heavier sizes we're actually going to make these all the way up to a third of an ounce so if wow. you want to demiki rig these if you want to um, do ned mikis or you want to fish it really deep um, that's going to be an awesome option for you all of our pros have been really excited about it everybody we've been showing they're super excited to put that with their original finesse trds and many of the other finesse baits that we come out with um, and past that, some baits that we also released back at the Classic, but we still consider them new baits, is our new Nico Shrooms and TRD Spins. So the Nico bait has been a phenomenal bait. Everybody's been throwing it recently. Well, one issue is traditionally with Nico rigs, you're using those old lead style weights. Mm -hmm. You press them in. Well, the problem with the last deck is A, it's tough to get it in there, but B, it's tough to keep it in there. So we actually came out with this Ned Shrooms created a custom keeper on it so that it stays in elastic and plastic saw baits extremely well. You don't need to worry about super glue, you don't need to worry about flying out when you're skipping under docks. You just press that in there and it holds really well to elastic or plastic saw and you can fish it all day. Um, same thing with the TRD spins. We wanted to be able to add a little bit of flash. We call it the TRD spins, but you can fish it with almost any bait. It's basically adding a little bling to whatever bait you want. You can put it on the back of a TRD. You can put it on the bottom of a diesel minnow for an underspin. You can cut off the tail of a swim bait and stick it in the back for a cool little uh, flashy swim bait design. There's endless opportunities with that. And it still has that same keeper, so you can press it into Elastec really easily, and it's gonna hold really secure. Yeah, I like punching them into the back end of like a Zoom Horny Toad or a Rivet or something like that. And that yeah, gives it a little, exactly. I picked up some at the Classic myself. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, man, I appreciate you taking me through absolutely. the walkthrough. And yeah. so we covered about one one hundredth of the stuff that's here in the booth. So where can they find out more information about everything Z-Man? Yeah, so if you want to see every single product we carry, go to ZManFishing.com. We've got awesome blogs on there. We've got tons of content. We've got our store where you can see every single bait in every single color tons of possibilities and check it out at zmanfishing.com yeah so as you guys know i'm partners with fish usa fish usa has got a great selection but you can go to their website click on the dealer tab and find a dealer near you or just you know sit there and drool on the computer all right brother awesome. thanks man thanks appreciate you guys tuning in do me a favor before we move any further in this video leave a comment below and tell me what you think about the z-man products you saw here or what z-man products would you like to see featured in a future video all right we'll be moving now to somewhere else over there because there's a lot of show left to do and not a lot of time left to do it so look i don't have anything really new to say about power pole other than i've been using it since the beginning it's still cooler than the other side of the pillow and it's still the most effective tool for managing boat position out there and uh it's reliable it's fast it makes your fishing that much more effective and um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. I'm gonna kind of pull a Forrest Gump on this one. Ain't got much to say because everything I've got to say about this has been said. Phenomenal product, best addition to my kayak ever. And uh, get yourself one. And if you get one, get rid of this cord and get this battery pack. Makes life way easier. Boat to boat, easy to install. You don't have to worry about cordage or battery falling around. And this thing lasts forever.
All right, guys, so listen, I made it to the deeper booth. And as you guys know, I've been throwing one of these and it doesn't look like this. The reason that the one I've been throwing doesn't look like this is the one that I've been throwing is standard sonar. But this is their new Chirp. And one of these made it to my house two days after I left Rycast. So I've got this package sitting on my porch and I get to go put... Yeah, yeah. Just move it around a bit. I'll get some tights. Ready? So I get to go home and play with this bad boy to take what has already been an awesome addition to my arsenal, that castable transducer that I can get up under docks, that I can let drift in current, that I can use to map those uncharted lakes, those lakes that are not there, an interactive app that really allows me to take my fishing to the next level. And it's never something that I would find in a little package like this. And then before I cast, I got a call from Ignis and he was telling me that it's getting better. I got a sneak peek of it at Gunnersville this year when he came down to uh, you know help us out with some run through on the tech side. But now it's here, I'm holding it. It's green, it's chirp. And we're about to find out when it's gonna be available. Ignis, come in here, man. So when are we gonna see the chirp available at retail? Oh crap. You have to wake up? Yeah, yeah. So when are we gonna see the the deeper chirp available at retail? Uh, I mean really, really soon. Uh, it will be launched uh, here in the States uh, on the market. It will be end of July, beginning of August. And like we are super, super proud to launch the first ever castable chirp technology chirp, uh, castable sonar. It has never been done in the market, nowhere. So we're super excited. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, Chad was probably the first man here in States to test out that chirp. Yeah, back definitely. In March. That's what you told me. Yeah, in March, yeah. I was throwing this. And, and to be honest with you, early on in my exposure to the product, to Deeper, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick, right? right and yeah. then I started to watch some of the YouTube videos. And then I started to watch some of the, the tactics that guys were doing to it, some of the cat fishermen. The one that really pushed me over the top was I saw an ice fishing demonstration, I thought, how is it working in ice, right? How is the, the transducer working in ice? Because most people, you know, are dropping the transducer to the bottom. Yeah. And so then I started doing some research. After I started doing some research, I reached out to the company. We started a conversation. They put some of my, what do you want to call it, concerns at ease. Next thing you know, we connected and got on the water. He was smiling like this, like a Chesa cat, had a, a secret to share, and he showed me the, the chirp technology. We took it out there, we connected it to my phone. We were casting it around the dock. We were dragging it over a couple of humps, over some muscle, and it was showing up like at a quality that I never believed you would get out of not just a unit this small, but a unit this inexpensive. That's so right. yeah. we started letting the kids play with it. I started letting Christy play with it. I started telling other anglers about it, and guys were calling me, telling me what they figured out they could do with it. So the thing is, well, so the thing, the demo has stopped, so give me a second. <laughs> I want to wait till it gets to the... The simulation? Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready? So what's cool about it is it's a comprehensive system. It's an app, it's a mapping system, it's logging for your trips, you can go back and look at stuff. But more importantly, it's comprehensive. It gives you everything you need to paint the picture, but not just to paint the picture, but to paint the picture underwater of what you're doing. I fish a lot of uncharted places. I fish a lot of places that, you know, Navionics maps don't cover, that the built-in uh, uh, mapping doesn't cover on those larger units. And you can go out there and you can do it yourself. More importantly, you can find that thing that you need to find. You can check the depth before you paddle across a spot and spook it. And when I first got it, I wanted to put it on the flex arm. I wanted to mount it on the side of the kayak so it was kind of a, a second view uh, to my standard um, sonar unit. But then when I started casting it, when I started actually taking advantage of the full you know, reason for this thing existing, I decided I'm probably not gonna mount it on the kayak that much, which is traditionally what most kayak anglers wanna do. I wanna mount it on the kayak. And you can do that if you're just looking for that, that transducer that's inexpensive, that's versatile, that offers a lot of functionality. But for me, this is gonna stay tight on a rod. 
to where if I want to see what's going on over there, or if I want to find a ditch in a flat, I can cast over, slow reel, and when I see that dip, then I know where to target my next cast. If I see that drop off, I can just let the, let the, the sonar sit there, and then I'm using it as an electronic buoy, and I'm using it as a spot to target my next cast. This thing is phenomenal. The whole product is phenomenal. You've got to add one to your arsenal, even if you're a fan of bigger, more expensive units. It's a great buddy system, um, and it's great for travel. So check out deepersonar.com, learn more about the whole deeper system, and uh, stay tuned for coming soon. Ignis says by the end of this month, the deeper sonar in chirp technology. All right, so I made my way over here to the angler booth. Um, Cause you know how they say, save the best for last? Cause literally everything I've talked about at this show is better if you use the Angler app to get out there and put it to use. I would agree. But I'm gonna let Landon tell you why it's better. Angler was uh, really built on a need to automate a fisherman's logbook. Uh, we were tired of keeping written stuff down, Excel sheets, having photos over here, having three different apps for weather and water and maps. We took all of that, push it into one mobile app. And now that mobile app works like a boating electronic. It charts your water. It allows you to do a GPS path behind you, you drop your waypoints, your catches. Uh, and then it brings in weather and water information to your location throughout the entire day that you're on the water. Uh, we do that with a NOAA integration, a USGS integration, and then our, our AccuWeather and our uh, Dark Sky integrations for all that weather juiciness data. At the end of the day, all of that's stored into a nice singular place. It's private by default, so nobody gets to see your information. You can share it if you want to. I could share something with you through a text or an email. Yep. You can uh, share it with your wife. Like when I turn on Angler Track and I'm going somewhere I haven't been or whatever, I can turn it on and my wife can follow me yep. at home, which <clears> is a pretty cool thing. Uh, you can drop off your kids and watch them on Angler Track. You can fish with your kids. I'm, you think, you're yeah, laughing, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you can fish with your kids and That's have them turn on Angler Track. Yep. And you can go on the app and watch it and it's pretty cool. I mean, you could turn this thing into Daughter Track because I'm gonna be straight with you. Several times I've left Angler Track on and I got home from somewhere and I'd driven like six hours and I had like a streak across the United States. So it'll follow you it'll everywhere follow you, you go. go. So, you know, just slide it in the backpack, turn it on, make sure it's running and- uh, Well, when the app works, it's on, it's on yeah. mobile, it's on tablet and it's on a laptop. Top, so you kind of get that cross-pollination between any platform. But the coolest thing here is that really in the reality is we don't want to be on our phones, on a phone, on the water, using it. We really just want some automation there. So this little device here, you click it, it's going to keep you hands-free from the phone, uh, back to fishing much quicker. One click drops a catch, uh, two clicks marks a waypoint, and you press and hold it actually signifies and timestamps a tackle change. And all of that's important because it builds out some deep analytics to help you plan, record, and improve much better the next time you're on. So it's, it's all about fishing intelligence, getting stronger on the water, uh, and having record books of, of everything you've done. So one, one thing I've done is I've come up with a little system. I've, as you notice, I'm not wearing one on my hat, right? And the reason being is I've knocked two of them out of my kayak. Uh, doing stupid stuff, turning around, hitting my camera pole, hitting a rod. So if you ever watch my videos and you pay attention, mine's always on my PFT right here. And the reason for that is I can slide my thumb in behind it and I can just click it. So what I've started to do is I've started to do these two click things, right? If I really wanna make note of something, I'll click it, I'll float five, 10, 15 feet, I'll click it again, and I get these kind of double uh, waypoints. Uh, if I do a turn spot, like if I turn somewhere and I'm investigating something, when I when that turn was positive, I'll go back to that spot and I'll put a third click and I'll say this spot is a part. So what I'm doing is I've created a little code for myself to do crumb trails, right? To do this, when I'm going back and deciphering what I'm doing, uh, if I find stumps, right? I do three or four clicks for a stump and it looks like a little cluster. Yeah. Um, I've just kind of decided that I created this little short code because like Landon said, you don't want to have to take your phone out every time. Yep. And the beautiful thing about it being hands-free is I can keep it on my PFD, I can reach up, I can press it, I can stick my thumb behind it and click it. But I've developed these little short codes because when I go back in and I'm starting to look back at what I did, I want to know. If I turn right, I do two clicks. If I turn left, I'll do a L, right? So there's just little things that I've done that I've learned that makes it easier. And I've been probably an obsessive logbook keeper for so long, part of it is the decompression of a fishing trip for me of sitting down and writing it down. 
but you always forget stuff. And so the cool thing about the Angler app is it grabs it all. It grabs the location. There's been times where I thought I was somewhere in my mind and got home and tried yep. to look it up on a map. But then I've found with going back and looking at angler track and looking at some of my, my waypoints after I used the bullseye, that I'm like, wait, I thought I was somewhere else. And I literally thought the app yep. was off. Um, in fact, I called Nick one time. I was like, dude, I think something's wrong. I'm pretty sure I was fishing here, but I went back and looked at the GoPro footage and was like, holy crap. So it's just a, a, a level of accuracy and a level of latency on your fishing trips where you 100% capture everything that happened at that time. And it just makes things come uh, become visible to you that wasn't visible before. You, you can kind of see the it? patterns. Yeah, you let's got, take a look at it. Let's take a look right at over it. Here. So we have the live demo here. And what I'm doing is this is, you're seeing my, my screens here and vice versa. Let's get out of here. And so we pull in, I was talking about all that weather and water. So the first start of Angler is about planning and planning out your day, where you're gonna go, what the water conditions are doing. And there's a lot of different cool things. So right now you're looking at, all of this is stream flow data. This is live radar, underwater bathometry, contours. And then these are all USGS water gauges. So I can select one of those water gauges. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me how the water is trending. So as I'm planning out my day, I'm looking to see if is it dropping, is it rising? It's gonna help me think about how I'm fishing. And then you see the weather. I was talking about how weather conditions start to stop. You can see all of the barometer changing, the winds changing, the gauge, the tide, the cloud coverage. It's all there for you uh, to learn, to, Again, plan better the next time and record. So one thing that I say on a pretty regular basis is this. I have a thing called the 60-30-10 rule. There's no accident that probably 90% of the fish are caught by 10% of the anglers and it's anglers in the know. And that 60-30-10 rule is simple. It's 60% you know, knowledge. It's 30% preparation and it's about 10% luck. The less knowledge and the less preparation you have, the more you're putting in that luck bucket. So when you take a an app that doesn't only help you with tracking but it increases your knowledge base it doesn't only help you with pre-trip planning but it gives you that information after the fact to compare to what you thought was there it increases that knowledge base so if you can increase your knowledge base and you can do better at preparation because you have everything at the tip of your fingers you've got the perfect combination to get into that 10 percent that's catching 90 percent of the fish so if you're looking to take your fish into the next level you got to check out the angler app it's you got to get a bullseye. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like I said, I don't wear mine on my hat because I knocked a couple of them in the water. <laughs> and so I wear mine on my PFD. And I wear about 50 different hats, like figuratively and literally. And so I've got on the water and I'm like, ah. Oh. So I put it on my PFD. It's actually kind of stitched in there so it can't come off. I'm never going to be on the water without my PFD. And I'm never going to be on the water without my bullseye. So check out Angler's app. Go to the app store for any freaking phone you're on. I think you could probably get it on a track phone now and uh, add that to your arsenal. It'll make you a better angler because you'll have more information to increase your knowledge base, to plan better, and planning better with more knowledge is gonna help you fish better. So, thanks for watching today's video. Y'all do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button if you haven't done so, and if you like today's video. Hope you like the vlog content here from iCast. That's gonna do it for iCast 2019. We're gonna start to pack some stuff up. We're gonna start to get ready. We got a dinner and a drink that we gotta have you know, we've got a meeting with later tonight. Uh, long trip back to Tennessee. Um, do me a favor, if you haven't done so yet, click on the link in the description box. We're still doing the ginormous, big, amazing, awesome giveaway. Watch that video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and you're automatically entered for a chance to win. Well guys, that's gonna do it for our trip to ICAST 2019. Listen, anytime we're in the area, we stay at Encore Resort Properties at Reunion. They have an amazing water park, an unbelievably friendly staff, and an amazing restaurant on the property. We'll see you guys in the next video.